In the skies above hostile territories during the Cold War, two aircraft soared higher and faster than any before them. One was slow and steady, relying on altitude and precision, while the other shattered speed barriers, making it nearly untouchable. These planes were the U-2 Dragon Lady and the SR-71 Blackbird, two of the most advanced spy planes ever built. But which one truly reigned supreme? In the 1950s, the world teetered on the edge of nuclear war, and intelligence was the most powerful weapon of all. The US needed eyes in the sky, something that could peer deep into Soviet territory and get out before anyone even knew it was there. Enter the Lockheed U-2, aka the Dragon Lady. A plane so secret, it was tested at a site in Nevada we now know as Area 51. This bird wasn't built for speed, it was built to fly so high that nothing on the ground could touch it. At 70,000 feet, it was like a ghost floating above Soviet radars, snapping high-resolution images of missile sites, nuclear facilities, and anything else the US needed to know. But not everything went smoothly. In 1960, the unthinkable happened. A U-2 flown by CIA pilot Gary Powers was shot down over the Soviet Union by a missile that managed to reach its lofty altitude. Powers survived, but his capture ignited a global scandal. Suddenly, America's prized spy plane was no longer invincible. It was like a wake-up call. The US needed something faster, something untouchable. And that's where the SR-71 would come into play. When the U-2 got shot down, Lockheed's engineers knew they needed to rethink the game. The solution? Speed. Not just any speed. Record-breaking, missile-dodging, the SR-71 cruised at Mach 3.2. That's over 2,200 miles per hour, while soaring 85,000 feet above the Earth. To put that into perspective, this thing could fly from New York to London in under two hours. The Blackbird's skin was made almost entirely of titanium to handle the extreme heat generated at such speeds. Heat so intense that the plane expanded mid-flight, leaving visible gaps on the runway that sealed shut as the aircraft soared through the sky. But it wasn't just fast, it was sneaky too. The Blackbird's design, with its long, dark silhouette and special radar-absorbing paint, reduced its radar signature, making it harder to track. But here's the real kicker. If the enemy did spot it and launched a missile, the U-2 and SR-71 were both designed to be the ultimate spy planes, but they couldn't have been more different. It's like comparing a surgeon's scalpel to a sledgehammer. Let's go head-to-head -head and see where each plane stood out. Altitude versus speed. The U-2's defense was simple, fly so high, no one could touch it. At 70,000 feet, it was above the clouds, collecting intelligence undisturbed. But when Soviet missiles got smart, it became a sitting duck. The SR-71, it didn't care how high it flew. At Mach 3, it could scream past any threat before radar operators even knew what hit them. Mission Duration Here's where the U-2 shines. This plane could stay airborne for 12 grueling hours, creeping along at a slow pace while collecting every piece of data it could. The SR-71 was like a hit-and-run driver. Ground crews would spend days patching it up for its next stint. Intelligence gathering. While the SR-71 was a speed demon, the U-2 was a workhorse. Its suit of cameras, sensors, and radars could gather a treasure trove of data, all while hovering high in the sky. It wasn't fast, but it was thorough. The SR-71, meanwhile, was all about getting in and out as quickly as possible, scooping up whatever data it could in the blink of an eye. Legacy. Here's where things get interesting. The U-2, despite being over 70 years old, is still flying. Upgraded with modern tech, it remains a cornerstone of US intelligence gathering. The SR-71, though, retired in 1998. It was too expensive to maintain, and satellites started taking over its job. But let's be real, no satellite will ever be as cool as the Blackbird. Both the U-2 and SR-71 required a rare breed of pilot, men who weren't just brave, but borderline fearless. U-2 pilots, known as drivers, flew alone at the edge of space in suits that looked more astronaut than aviator. Imagine spending 12 hours in a cramped cockpit, staring down at the Earth, knowing that if something went wrong, 
help was thousands of miles away. And then there were the SR-71 pilots. These guys weren't just pilots, they were daredevils, flying faster than a bullet. They had to make split-second decisions, knowing that the tiniest mistake could rip their aircraft apart. One famous story involves pilot Brian Schull, who, during a mission over Libya, had a missile fired at him. His response? Push the throttle past Mach 3.5 and outrun the missile. That's the kind of nerve you needed to fly the Blackbird. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more mind-blowing military content, and tell us in the comments, are you Team Dragon Lady or Team Blackbird? Thanks for watching.